So now we're going to be performing a von Neumann stability analysis upon uh, this uh, partial differential equation that uh, models the heat diffusion within the bar that we uh, discussed in the previous video. Uh, this equation here is the solution to this partial differential equation, uh, but we're not going to worry about how we obtain that solution. Uh, we're just interested in the stability analysis. So the first thing to note is that these k values uh, depend on um, the conditions of the bar, the boundaries of the bar. So say if one side was um, insulated or uh, depending on which temperatures uh, each end of the bar is at, uh, those decide our k values for this equation. Uh, but for now, we're just going to leave it in variable form and uh, start the analysis. So as mentioned in the previous video, um, when we use a uh, time step of 0.5 seconds or less, uh, the graph that we get starts going haywire. So we're trying to figure out why that may be the case and figure out a more um, a better upper limit for our time step or a more precise limit for our time step. So I'm going to go ahead and write the uh, expression we used in the previous video. So now um, let's rewrite our um, our formula for T here, our temperature, uh, in terms of our uh, time and our position intervals. So as a reminder, you can express the position, uh, actually I'll write it as that. Uh, it's our increment, our position increment times our index of position, so x delta xj. And then it's the same thing for time, where it's just uh, our time increment times our number of increments. So if we plug that into this equation here, uh, and at j comma n, uh, we just have to re-express this x in terms of uh, our delta xj, and the same thing with our time. So we can rewrite this as e to the i k uh, delta x times j, and then we can rewrite this as e to the negative alpha k squared uh, t, or sorry, delta t times n. And we can go ahead and do this for um, our, uh, our temperature variable at different position and time increments. So if we look up at our equation here, we have uh, t j plus 1. So we'll go t j plus 1 n e to the i k delta x and then j plus 1 and then e to the negative alpha k squared delta t times n plus 1. And if you notice here, uh, these two expressions are almost identical, with the only difference being um, this second expression here has this j plus 1 term instead of our j. So this part of the equation is the same for both terms. Um, and we can actually just rewrite this in terms of our t uh, at position j and um, uh, time index n. So t j plus 1 n is going to be equal to e to the i k delta x times t j n. So again, um, when you multiply these two together, you'll have um, this will be the plus 1 up here. Th this term represents the plus 1 in this equation right here, uh, and then this tj, um, tjn is the ei to the k, um, e to the ik delta x times j. Uh, and then you can do the same thing below 
for um, our temperature at position J minus one, negative E to the I K delta X T J comma N. Uh, and I made a quick mistake. I accidentally just moved this negative sign down here instead of leaving it in the exponent. Uh, so now, if I can remember how to lasso, oh, that is not lasso, there we go. We can rewrite this expression once I get it down to the bottom. Uh, we can rewrite this expression in terms of our, um, I guess I'll call it simplified uh, expressions for each increment. So tj plus 1n uh, will just get plugged in here, and then this will get plugged in here. And if you look, uh, we have this tj comma n uh, common between all of them, uh, so we can move that to the outside of the expression. So we'll end up with tj comma n plus 1 is equal to tj comma n and then e to the i k delta x which again comes from up here uh, actually times r but I'd like to put the r on the front so times r so r times e to the i k delta x that is an x not a t believe it or not there we go so that comes from up here uh, plus 1 minus 2 r plus r uh, and then e to the negative i k delta t or sorry delta x again uh, so now our goal is to eliminate this imaginary number here uh, and we can just do that using Euler's formula uh, e to the i x is equal to cosine of x plus i sine of x, and if this is negative i x, you just change this positive to a negative, uh, but for now it doesn't matter. And if you look up here, well actually it does matter. If we look up here, uh, we have this negative here, we have this positive here, and they are being added together, so that means is that we can express each of these in terms of Euler's formula. And then x is just our um, k delta x. These don't have any core, like these, this is not referring to position. Uh, that's just the term in the formula. Um, this one does refer to the position. So here, uh, since these are being added up here, uh, we can add them again. So we'll just end up with um, cosine, cosine of x plus cosine of x, which is going to be equal to 2 cosine k delta x. And we just have to plug that in up here. Uh, do note that each of these is multiplied by r, so we have to retain that r. So we're going to have t at position j, or sorry, t at position, uh, the temperature at position j, and uh, time increment n plus 1 from our current time is going to be equal to the temperature at the position and the current time times 1 minus 2r plus 2r cosine of k delta x. So the part we're concerned about with the von Neumann stability analysis is this part of the expression here. Sorry, uh, I just underlined the whole expression. Uh, this part of the expression. Um, because if the term that we're multiplying our current uh, temperature or our current increment by is uh, greater than 1 or less than negative 1, uh, the expression is going to increase or decrease extremely rapidly. And we'll get that insane graph that we had before on Python. 
So let's just rewrite this. 1 minus 2r plus 2r cosine of k delta x. And I'll just move this over here so it's a little prettier. So uh, that has to be less than or equal to 1, an absolute value of that, I should say. Um, but it's actually preferable to write this as a compound inequality so that we can subtract 1 from each side. So we'll have negative 2 is less than or equal to 2r. I'll go ahead and pull out this common 2r term. 2r cosine, not sure what that was, cosine of k delta x. Having a hard time here. k delta x, there we go, not delta k, delta x. Uh, minus 1 is less than or equal to 0. Uh, so the first thing to note here is that uh, the value of the cosine function can never be greater than 1, uh, which is the only way it can be positive. Um, it, it has a max value of 1, so at its maximum value uh, we'll have 1 minus 1 equals 0 times 2r. Uh, so we'll have a value of 0. Um, so we know that for sure, no matter what, it's always going to be less than or equal to zero. Uh, the next point is that R is just equal to our alpha and, uh, over our delta, um, sorry, our delta T over delta X squared. Uh, this is just our thermal diffusivity, uh, from before, from the last video times our, uh, time increment times our uh, position increment squared. Uh, and in that case, this is always going to be positive. So no matter what, um, this is a negative. So this, this will always be negative or zero. And this will always be positive. A positive times a negative or zero is always going to be a negative. So what we're concerned about is negative two is less than or equal to two r. So when this is zero, when this cosine is zero, uh, we'll have negative one inside the parentheses. Uh, so for this to be true, two r has to be less than or equal to zero. And we can just divide across by two. So we have negative one is less than or equal to r. So while this is an answer, um, and in case you didn't notice, I did re have to rewrite it, um, but while this is an answer, it's not very useful to us because again, r is equal to um, our alpha delta t over delta x squared. Um, this isn't very useful to us because this expression is always going to be positive. So instead of looking at it in terms of the maximum value of um, r, or sorry, uh, the um, uh, value of cosine at zero, where this becomes negative one, or sorry, at uh, the maximum value of cosine, where this becomes zero, Let's instead look at it when this is equal to negative 1. And this expression becomes negative 2. So we'll have negative 2 is less than or equal to uh, negative 4r. Um, negative 4r. And then when we divide across, we have to flip this uh, inequality sign. So we'll have negative 1 over negative 2. So these cancel and we'll be left with uh, one half is greater than or equal to r and uh, in this case our alpha and our delta x squared were one um, so our delta t is the same as delta um, uh, delta sorry our delta t is the same as r so we can even just replace it in here and that's consistent where we, with what we found when we found that uh, whenever the time step was 0 0.5 or above, um, our graph started to break down.